Wild Card Wednesday. I'm here with Hayden Hale. Say what? What? So what we're doing here is we're going to go ahead and put in a new thermostat on this 4 liter 2000 Jeep Cherokee. One of the greatest, most iconic vehicles ever. But the problem is, even though I've got this all clean in a factory finish, I don't have a clean surface here and I can't get it clean because the coolant keeps spilling. So what we're going to do is we're going to use some compressed air somewhere else. If you do it here, it just sprays everywhere, it makes a big mess and you breathe it. Nobody's got time for that. So we stick the air down the radiator hose, pinch it off, and watch what we do here. We've got a drain pan fit to catch this underneath. Blow a little bubbly. Just like turning on the tap, nice and controlled. So we blow the coolant out of the engine. That's the weekend that drank a little too much last night. So we do that and then you watch the level settles below where we're working. So now we're just in great shape. There's nothing wrong with that. So this is a thermostat. It doesn't have a bubbler or a hole in it to pass air. I like to have a bubble hole so that air can get through past the thermostat. If air accumulates on the back side, then this bimetal spring isn't going to compress or do its thing that it's supposed to do because the air won't carry the same energy to open it that the fluid will. So we're going to drill a hole. Typically you just do whatever is stock. Whatever's factory, you get close to factory, that works. But if you have a known problem like this, then it's a good idea to do it. I do the same thing on Subaru ones. Um, you just want to use a really small hole. Uh, but if you have a head gasket failure that's passing a little bit of CO2 through the coolant jacket, you can put like three holes or something in it. And that's on the Subaru ones where it's facing down like that. The ones that are facing this way in the front aren't so bad, but the old 2.5 and 2 liters that are uh, in the bottom, you definitely want to make sure they've got a hole. The block of wood's there just for decoration. It just helps support the metal on the back side so I get a good clean hole. This is the biggest hole you should ever do in this. That's plenty big enough. So the next thing we're going to do is we're going to put the thermostat in. Of course this is going to be the highest point. Air goes to the top of the fluid. We want the air to go through. Uh, you'll notice that there's a little indentation. As I slide this down it'll click in. So we want to make sure that we glue this in there. We want to make sure that we don't block our hole. Uh, but we glue the thermostat in. Then we put the gasket on. The little round hook part should go up and the bolt should match. Let me show you. So the ideal way to do these is to have the other side be sticky. You can see that this has a peel sticker. Um, but you want to have it stick to the engine block side, not to the thermostat housing side. There's no cut in for the thermostat here. Um, so anyway, this will go on like that. Like I say, the ideal way is to have it go, I don't know if I even like that. What I've always done is I glue this on with Permatex Right stuff and then I glue the thermostat in with Permatex Right stuff. You can do it even without and you'll be fine. But what happens is, is people will put these in and by people I mean I've done it myself. Uh, they'll go to put them on like that and then in that last little second before you get the thermostat on, it drops. It'll fall down just a little bit. And when that happens, see how it's falling down like that? Now it's too thick here, it's going to leak and you've got a bypass so it takes forever to heat up. And so if you use a ton of silicone, it'll patch it up and not leak, but then of course it's not doing its job properly. And yes, there is a bypass here, but it's not enough because the air gets trapped at the top part of it sometimes. So that's why the hole. The hole isn't mandatory, but it's kind of nice. So here's what I do. I take my uh, Permatex Right stuff because it's just sticky like that. It does a really good job of being uh, a holder of gaskets, thermostats, whatever. This is going to be a pain for the next guy, but hopefully he's got one of those little plastic bristle brushes on a angle grinder and he can just buzz it out. That's what I do. So you take this and you just stick it in there. So there's my hole. It's at the top. I've cleaned all my surfaces so that they're nice and good. In fact, I'm just going to use just a little bit of gasket maker on this as well. Just a line. A lot of gaskets that you buy have a printed, a printed rubber or silicone thing on them. It's not a bad thing to have. We got our two bolts. I'll put the small one in first. Just start it. Now the whole time this has been sitting there, 
and held there and I don't have to worry about it. That's awesome. Let's say life has all kinds of things that are hard. This doesn't have to be one of them. And it's because uh, the thermostat's mounted sideways like this that it wants to fall. So once I've got my holes lined up, now notice I haven't even touched that thermostat with the housing yet. It's just all floating in there on its own and it's holding fine. I've got both of my bolts started. I've got my ratchet close by. So I push it in place and then I'll just drive my bolts home the rest of the way. That's how you do it. Thanks for tuning in. That's your quick dip. <laughs> Thanks for tuning in. That's your quick tip for the day for our Wild Card Wednesday video. Let's get a pan of some of the body work, the customization on this baby. This thing, this thing's had some action. Look, look at the roof on this beauty. And the duct tape. And the duct tape. That's fresh brand new tape. <laughs> Camouflage duct tape. Thanks for watching. Be sure to click like and subscribe. Bonus footage at the end. Got a letter from Adam Cabbage, or Cabbage, I don't know if that, I think that's a J. Cabay, it might be a Y. Not sure. But I'm just happy he sent me a letter, so thank you. Hey Brian, my name is Adam. I was born in Poland. I've been in U.S. for 21 years, pretty much all of my life. I live in Homer Glen, Illinois by Chicago. That's awesome. You got steelhead fishing up there. I enjoy your videos. It helps all of us a lot. I'm a mechanic and remember cars without computers at all. Does carburetors keep up to good work? So what's interesting about this plate is that it's so heavy. How heavy is it? It's about 200 grams heavy. That's a pretty heavy plate. Uh, to compare that, I've got a whole bunch of plates from Idaho, uh, California. See, it's 110. That's like half. How about Arizona? Arizona plates about 110. So I'm not messing around. I'm not staging nothing funny here. Utah plates are 90. California plates probably about the same, 100. Um, Quebec, I just realized that I had this one sent to me. This is from uh, Martin Gaola uh, from St. Eustache, Quebec, Canada. Quebec plates weighing at 100. I uh, just got one in from Alaska from a family friend, uh, 100 grams. Here's an old school Alaska one, I got that from that one, from them too. About 100 is normal. So 200, it's like there's two of them. But when you look, I had to check this three or four different times, and it's just one plate. Illinois just does it hardcore. Awesome, thanks Adam. That's way cool. <laughs> Land of Lincoln, that's awesome. Let me show you why that's awesome. So thanks to Adam Kabash, who's originally from Poland. He's been living 21 years in the good old US of A. Uh, I have Illinois. You see Illinois, I found my Alaska tags. But there's 32 states that I'm missing. I've got 18 of them, plus a few bonus ones, which I'm really proud of and I love. Uh, but these are the states, uh, basically New England and the Ohio River Valley. I'm missing a bunch of uh, states from there and also the Gulf of Mexico I'm missing a little bit in there with Louisiana and Mississippi every time I go to the post office and I have something there especially if it's a license plate or something it makes my day it really does I love it I may get some stickers coming um, I'd love to hear from you guys what you guys would like to hear as far as uh, or have as far as a Brian's Mobile One sticker or a B-Mob sticker or what you guys think would be cool. What would you want to put on your car? Let me know in the comments below. And thank you very much, uh, Adam and everybody else that's been sending in plates. I really appreciate it.
Yeah.